Hello, welcome to this video, or it's a series of videos on the comparison test. There are two comparison tests. One is called the direct comparison test and the other is called the limit comparison test. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this Calc 2 journey. In this video, we introduce the direct comparison test. And in the next video, we'll do some examples. So let's take a look at it. We have the direct comparison test is used to find out whether or not a series of all positive numbers um, is convergent or divergent. Now, uh, so you have to make sure that all the terms must be positive. You can't use this test if you have any negative terms whatsoever. Okay, so here's, here's how the test works. So you have to go and get another series to compare your series to. The series that you're given, we're gonna call it A sub n, and the series you go out and get, we're gonna call it B sub n. Now, the one that you go out and get, you gotta make sure you know what that series does, okay? And so then you have to be able to find an inequality based off of what that series does. If you go out and get a series that is convergent, your B sub n, series is convergent then what needs to happen inequality wise is you need to say for sure that the given series a sub n is always smaller than or equal to the series you went out and got b sub n okay if that's the case then for sure the given series will also converge and we'll take a look at why on the next couple slides it sounds reminiscent of what you did back for improper integrals with the direct comparison theorem. Okay, on the flip side of this, if you go out and get a series that is divergent, you know for sure your B sub n series is divergent, then the inequality you need to hold is that you need your series that you went out and got to be less than or equal to the given series A sub n, term by term. And if so, then your given series will also diverge. All right, great. Some technicalities we want to look at. Um, for the series B sub n, the one that you go out and get, you got to know whether or not it converges or diverges. Now, to do that, we usually choose um, a P series or a geometric series. Those are really easy to see whether they converge or diverge. Remember, the P series is 1 over n to the P. And then the geometric series is when you have a ratio r who's raised to the n. Based on the value of that r, you can tell convergence or divergence. Based on the value of that p in the p series, you can tell convergence or divergence. So make sure you got one. Go, go out and get one that's very uh, simple to know uh, what it does. Okay. And how do you get it? Well, you want to find out what dominates, be in a numerator or a denominator, uh, maybe both, and you want to figure out then what, what is being dominated, and you want to drop the terms that are being dominated or replace them with something. So let's take a close look at why the direct comparison test works the way it does. Let's go back and remember the direct comparison theorem for improper integrals. Okay, Remember we had this nice graph that really uh, solidified it for us. We have uh, a function f of x who's always bigger than a function g of x. And you don't really know which one you're given. You have to, you have to figure it out based off of um, what, you, um, what the inequality is. So you go out and get another function, right? You have your function and, um, that was given to you. And then you go out and get another function, same kind of thing, dropping off dominating terms or replacing dominating terms. And then you want to compare these and it has to be the following way. If, you're, if you go out and get a, a function that has a, um, that has a convergent integral, then it needs to be the bigger one. If the area under F is 7, the area under G, you don't have to know what it is, but you know it's less than 7, so therefore it's convergent. If the area under G is divergent, the area under F has no choice but to also be divergent. When, when, when I say divergent, I think of, you know, goes off to infinity. And so if your function is smaller than a function with finite area, then your function has to also have finite area. If your function is bigger than a function with infinite area, then your function has to also have infinite area. And so the inequality 
has to work the right way. Um, now let's tie back in with series. So if your series is smaller than a series that converges, then your series must also converge. Let's take a look at it term by term. So let's look at just the first one. We won't look at the second part. So we have a series that um, is convergent. You went out and got your B sub n, that's convergent. And you wanna check on the A sub n. What, what you need to be true is term by term, you need the A sub n to be smaller than or equal to the B sub n. A1 needs to be smaller than or equal to B sub 1. A2 needs to be smaller than or equal to B sub 2, and so on. And it goes on forever. So we put them side by side like this on purpose. What I'm gonna do is add these up now, right? I have officially then, as I go out to infinity, the summation of A sub n on the left, summation of B sub n on the right. Then we have that same situation that we had with the, with the functions and the improper integrals. I have a bigger function or a bigger series that converges. The smaller series has no choice but to also converge. If the bigger series converges to seven, I don't know what the smaller series converges to, but I know that it also converges. All right, great. So that's the idea behind the comparison test, the direct comparison test. And we're going to go through some examples in the next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this Calc 2 journey. Please uh, comment down below, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.